and welcome to the third edition of your South Texas Vestido Rojo. Bienvenidas sean todas ustedes. Thank you for joining us. I am Lilian Perez from Telemundo 60 San Antonio, and I am thrilled and honored to return as your MC. By now, I'm sure you've seen the two previous episodes of this awesome series where we discuss a multitude of important topics. They are relevant to each and every one of us and our families. And before we go any further, I want to take a moment to remind you that we still have one more Vestido Rojo on our calendar. Our final event is going to take place on May 22nd at 11 a.m. on Facebook. So make sure that you set a reminder so you can join us. Our program that day is going to include some really important information about stroke prevention and mental health and wellness. You're not going to want to miss it. So I hope you join us. I'm going to put this aside and let's talk about today's programs. Let me tell you, it's a shocking statistic because recent studies show that one in four U.S. adults, they sit for longer than eight hours each day. And this low level of physical activity can have negative consequences on both the physical and the mental health. In fact, swapping 30 minutes of sitting with 30 minutes of low physical activity can reduce your risk of death by 17%. Physical activity, which is moving more, is one of the most powerful tools to relieve stress, boost our mood, and also it can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke. And that is one reason why we have made this our focus for this edition of Vestido Rojo. April is Move More Month, and that means our program today is going to include unique and fun ways that we can get active as we head into these summer months. Some of those lessons 
will be great for those of us who maybe aren't as mobile or flexible as we'd like to be. Keep in mind that there's always something you can do, no matter where you are, that can help you move even more. We can go for quiet walks alone, and that, as we've made our way through this last year, that alone time can be just what we need to clear our minds and get our hearts pumping. We can also do things that don't take place at a gym and that don't cost anything. And the best part is that we can get our families involved too. So if you have kids who need to burn off some energy running around and playing outside, take 30 minutes and join them. Or leash up your four-legged bestie, back up the kids and head to a neighborhood park for a walk through nature. Start small. Any movement is better than no movement at all. And more is even better. Start out with just five minutes of movement and build up from there or split up your movement throughout the day. We don't need to make it complicated. All we need is to move more. Check this out. It's my you impression. Sitting there with no intentions of getting up. Pretty good, huh? But I'm not judging because I'd probably be doing the same. And since the average American watches TV and streaming media for more than four hours per day, the American Heart Association made binge breaks. A cool and quick way to get off your booty. That's right, booty. So be ready. We might just make you want to move the next time you binge. So I am ready for that physical activity because throughout the next hour, we're going to share a few of these binge breaks. They're produced by the American Heart Association and they make it easy to avoid the couch potato routine. So who's ready to spend a few minutes to get your heart pumping with us this morning? Join us now with a fun and easy workout. It's Samantha Altamirano and she's the Recreation and Enrichment Coordinator at the Methodist Healthcare Ministries of South Texas. The title of her workout is Bailando to Stay Fit. Sounds like we're about to get this day off to a great start. Samantha, take it away. Hi everybody, my name is Samantha. I am a Recreation and Enrichment Coordinator for Methodist Healthcare Ministries and today we're going to go ahead and dive into what components make up a dance fitness class. So go ahead and join me and get ready to move. Before we dive into our dance fitness party, let's go ahead and get started by warming up. For the majority of dance and or aerobic classes, warming up is a crucial part of the class. It helps prepare your cardiovascular system for physical activity, increases blood flow to your muscles, as well as it helps raise your body temperature. Overall, warming up helps you to gradually increase your heart rate and breathing to a level that will be able to meet the demands of your workout. Let's dance. There will be a variety of low and high intensity moves for an interval style, calorie burning, dance fitness party. Different genres of music fuse together to give you a fun, energetic way of exercising in disguise.
Overall, a dance fitness class combines all elements of fitness, cardio, muscle conditioning, balance, and flexibility with a boost of energy. All right, let's go ahead and cool it down. Cooling down after a fun, energetic exercise class can be very beneficial for your body. This is an important step that is recommended to not skip over. Overall, cooling down is very essential, so set time aside towards the end of the class to just stretch and cool down and get that heart rate back to a resting level and make sure you listen to your body. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and search for a dance fitness class near you. Thank you for joining me today. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Thanks, Samantha. Now. If you weren't ready to move more with us, don't feel bad. This episode of Vestido Rojo will stay right here on Facebook and you can always watch it as often as you'd like. If you're looking for something you can do to move more while you're at working, at home, or maybe at the office, then check out our next American Heart Association Binge Break. Binge Break number one coming right up. And it's exactly like it sounds. It's a break from binging, sitting, lounging, relaxing, not exercising. Ditch the popcorn, your phone, the blanket, and get on up. It's time for the warm-up sofa stretch. Let's get moving. <sighs> yes. And just so you know, the next time you see me, which may or may not be soon, we're totally breaking a sweat. Welcome back. We know physical activity, or simply moving more, is vital to both our physical and our mental health. Our next presenter is going to walk us through the connection between physical activity and good cardiovascular health. Please welcome Dr. Phoebe King from Texas IPS in San Antonio. Hello, my name is Dr. Phoebe King. I'm here with Texas IPS for one of the pulmonary and intensive care groups in the city of San Antonio. I'm here today to speak to you all about the importance of physical activity on your health, some of the health benefits that physical activity has, and some of the ways that we can work to improve our health. Just a little bit of background about me. I am a mother of two young children and I work full time. So I know very well about the challenges that real life presents to allowing you to be more physically active. And I'm here to kind of share some of the strategies I've learned to help with that. So we paired together with the American Heart Association um, and April is Move More Month. And the reason why this is so important is because in our society these days, sedentary has become the new normal. Our society has been increasingly sedentary as advances in technology, the internet, screens have all come to pass over the past 20 to 30 years. And the average adult will sit for more than eight hours each day. And I'm sure all of you understand this, especially with the impact of COVID, now that things have gone virtual, you can't even go in into the office, you may be at home. And that it's very difficult to be physically active. And this has negative health consequences, both physically and mentally. And like we talked about, COVID has really amplified this. Only about 20% of adults get the daily recommended amount of physical activity. And that recommended amount is at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise and 75 minutes of vigorous exercise or a combination of both throughout the week. This averages out to be 30 minutes, five days a week, which is very difficult to fit in considering there's only seven days in the week. 
Moderate activity can be defined as walking briskly, recreational biking or gardening, whereas your more vis vigorous activities are running, jumping rope, or weightlifting. And this sedentary lifestyle applies to children. Children are increasingly sedentary as well. The average teenager also sits for eight hours each day and the younger children need at least one to three hours of physical activity or physical play per day, depending on their age. And a lot of times the pull of TVs and iPads can make this very difficult, even for young children. So why is this important? As we've talked about, society is becoming increasingly sedentary and we're all seemingly chained to our desk and our computers. And physical activity can actually be a very powerful tool. It's a powerful stress reliever. It's a mood booster. It can reduce your anxiety and depression. It'll improve your cognitive function. As you get older, it'll decrease your risk of dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. It's gonna reduce your cardiovascular risk, whether that be risk for heart attack or stroke. It's, and physical activity, really those, those impacts you have with your own body weight can really help produce stronger muscles, bones, and joints. This in turn can reduce the risk of falls as you age. So as you're getting older, if you have a stronger base that you've already built up over the past few years and your adult lifehood or your adult um, life, this can help you as you get older. There's actually been shown to reduce the risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer, lung cancer, or colon cancer just by being more physically active. Obesity on the flip side has been linked to multiple complications, diabetes, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, sleep apnea, and studies have shown that your risk of death from bacterial pneumonia or viral pneumonias, especially COVID has been shown to be increased as you are, as your weight gets higher and you're more obese. The encouraging news is that a recent study has found that swapping 30 minutes of low intensity physical activity can reduce your risk of death by all causes by as much as 17%. So if you want to live longer, spend time with your kids and your grandkids or reap any of the other benefits we talked about, physical activity is very important. So some of the benefits of physical activity getting into more detail, we can break them down into physical and psychological. So if you start in the physical, the cardiac benefits, you lower your risk of coronary disease, you lower your risk of heart attack, you can have lower, you lower your cholesterol and triglyceride levels, with, which in turn plays back into lowering your risk of coronary disease. From a pulmonary standpoint, which happens to be my specialty, so it's near and dear to me, the heart and lungs have to work harder when you're exercising. And so your, your body and muscles start demanding oxygen and the heart and lungs have to work in tandem to meet your body's oxygen demands. This in turn is gonna make your heart and lungs stronger and give you more breathing reserve. As you have more breathing reserve, your body's gonna be more efficient at getting oxygen to your bloodstream and transporting them to the muscles. So over time, as your heart and lungs increase this level of efficiency, your muscles are gonna to learn to use less oxygen. And then you're gonna get less short of breath over time because your body actually needs less oxygen to perform a certain amount of activity. And the other thing to remember is your respiratory muscles are muscles too. They need work. They need to exercise. When you are breathing, all of the muscles that go in between your ribs called the intercostal muscles and your diaphragms, those are muscles as well. So as you're more physically active, those muscles are going to get stronger and stronger as you strengthen them. Additional physical benefits from an endocrine standpoint and a metabolic standpoint, we often hear about the famed metabolic syndrome that goes along with obesity. You're gonna have lower blood glucoses and this is and physical exercise is actually gonna help the insulin that your body already has to work more efficiently. This in turn leads to additional lower glucoses. And this is just by being physically active as your weight decreases as well, you're gonna reap additional benefits. As we've already talked about, you'll have stronger joints and stronger muscles from the impact that exercise has on your joints and strengthening them. And it's actually been shown to decrease bone density loss. So we've all heard about the dangers of osteoporosis, especially as we age. And exercise is gonna help prevent you from losing this very important bone density as you age. And as we talked about before, you'll have a decreased risk of falls and so with this increased both density, the decreased risk of falls, the more physically active you are and stronger you are, the better your body's gonna perform. You're also gonna see improvements in your immune system. Your immune system is going to be better at fighting off viruses, bacteria, any other, any attacks that it perceives. 
it's going to be stronger and able to fight that more. In turn, you're going to have less overall illnesses, especially in the winter. With my kids, they bring home every adenovirus or rhinovirus that their classmates have. So it seems, and I like to think that the physical activity has helped me kind of fight these off so I'm not as miserable during the winter as I otherwise would be. It's going to lead to better sleep. When you're physically active throughout the day, you're going to fall asleep faster. Research has shown that you fall, you stay asleep longer. So if you've ever noticed on a day that you're, let's say you go out and you help a friend move, or in the days of COVID, you go out and do a lot of yard work because we're all, you know, socially distancing as we should, you'll notice that you'll fall asleep a lot quicker and stay asleep a lot longer when you've been physically active. I see this all the time in my kids. If we take them somewhere to go swimming or a long day running around, they are so much easier to get to bed at night. The same applies for adults. And it actually improves your sexual health. You, as your energy levels increase, as you feel better about yourself, your mood gets better, you're going to be much more inclined for sexual activities that are very important to all of us. Moving more into the psychological benefits of physical activity, you're going to have an increased perception of happiness. People that work out more frequently or more physically active will report increased happiness on measurement scales. So endorphins release post-exercise and it promotes your sensation of well-being. While it is very painful sometimes to get up and actually work out when you are done, you are very glad you did it. You're gonna have less anxiety and depression. And what I mean by that is you overall are going to be less likely to develop depression. And what if you happen to have any mood disorders, which is perfectly normal and acceptable and very common these days, you're gonna feel better controlled. So your depression will be better controlled, your mood won't be as low and your anxiety swings won't be as high. And most importantly, especially for women, your body image improves. You know, it's, it's one thing to work out for your spouse or someone else. It's another thing entirely to want to become physically active and stay physically active in order to feel better about yourself. If you're doing something for yourself, it's much more likely to be something you can stick with rather than doing it for someone else. As in your body starts changing, you start feeling better, you see that increased muscle tone, it's going to feed into itself and you're going to want to do it more. Higher fitness levels have been associated with better attention, learning, working memory, and problem solving. So not only are you going to look better, you're going to feel a heck of a lot smarter when you're able to problem solve on your own and figure out things faster, and you're going to feel so much better. You're also more, more likely to be successful in smoking cessation. So people, it's very difficult to stop smoking. The average person stops smoking 10 times before they actually stop smoking. So this is very challenging. And a lot of people cite, well, I don't want the weight gain that comes along with smoking, with stopping smoking. And, and that is difficult. And so working out, you can kind of replace one drug for another, so to speak, and you can curb the weight gain that sometimes people see after smoking cessation with physical activity. So now that we know some of the benefits of it, I think we should talk about, you know, that obviously people have underlying health issues, whether it be COPD, high blood pressure, diabetes, and underlying health issues can make exercising and physical activity feel very daunting. Just the thought of, you know, I'm going to work out and in three minutes, I'm going to feel short of breath. I mean, that can be very unmotivating. It can be frightening. So it's very tempting to avoid exercise. The issue with that is if you constantly avoid exercise because you're afraid of how you feel while exercising, the less exercise and activities you do, the less fit you are and the harder it is to even do your activities of daily living. And so you have to remind yourself that you have to start somewhere. So as you become more physically active, the symptoms of your underlying issues, whether that be heart disease or lung disease, can actually improve through regular activity. People with rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis have been shown that if they move their joints more, they feel better as long as they take it slowly. So I would recommend you speak to your doctor about your exercise plan, go over with him or her what you plan on doing to make sure it's okay for your current level. Exercise at your own pace. Don't try to keep up with the person next door. And if you've all have ever seen Orange Theory Fitness, where they're all trying to competing and keep up on each other, and it's on like a scoreboard on a television, just ignore it. Don't do that. Move at your own pace. Whatever you do for you is good. And whatever you can do, and if you tried your best, that is good enough. You get too breathless to talk, pause, stop, take a short break. 
or trying exercising intermittently in short intervals. If you can only do five minutes, that's fine. Five minutes a few times a day adds up with time. And you, as you're getting stronger and as your endurance is improving, you can slowly add on time. Now let's talk about some of the barriers to physical activity. You know, everybody has home responsibilities. There's always something to do when you get home, whether it be the laundry or the dishes or cleaning up after the kids or something went wrong with the house or you have to mow the lawn. Whatever it is, there's always something pressing at home that we have to do. And on top of that, if you're working outside the home, you've got all the work responsibilities. You've got meetings that have to be done and presentations that have to be done. And it just seems like it's one thing after another that are always a barrier to trying to be more physically active. Some of the other barriers, the mom guilt. For those of you that are moms out there, the mom guilt is real. You feel like I work, I have all this to do at home. I should have to spend time every waking second with my kid. And when the kids are in bed, I finally get time to myself. And you're telling me you want me to devote that time to being physically active. And the mom guilt is real. With all these responsibilities piling on top of you, it's no wonder we all don't feel like we have any energy. We're too fatigued to do this. But the thing that I think we all have to remember is it's never too late to start. It is never too late to start somewhere. You can think, oh, I'm so out of shape. I'm gonna feel short of breath or I don't have time or I should be spending this and this. I think what we have to remember is making physical activity and exercise a priority. Commit to making a change. There's a difference between something you're interested in and something you're committed in, if you are committed to. If you are interested in something, you're gonna do it when it's convenient for you. When it piques your interest and you feel like this is a good time to do it, you're gonna do it. If you are committed to something, you don't have excuses and you don't accept excuses for not doing it. You say, I'm gonna do this, you commit to it. It's like a marriage. Or it's like when you have a child, you are committing to that other person and raising that child rather than just being interested in it. Exercise can, is very much the same thing. So where do we start? As we talked about before, April is Move More Month. It's an opportunity to take charge and make a change, make a commitment to exercising more. Move more throughout the day. Start with very little steps. Remember, anything is better than nothing. If you're gonna do five minutes a day, start with five minutes a day. Do what makes you happy, whether that be walking, dancing, jogging, yoga, it doesn't matter how silly you think you look, just do something, find something that you enjoy and commit to it. And if you miss one day, no problem. If you miss a week, no problem. You start the next week, don't beat yourself up about it. So some easy examples, if you're talking on the phone, you can do some jumping jacks. You can take the phone calls standing up, walk around the house. I often try to pace around the house when I'm taking phone calls because I tend to be a little bit of a high strung person, but I also, it helps me get my steps in and be active. You can do jumping jacks, squats, lunges, push-ups during commercials, whatever strikes your fancy. I will take my kids out on for a walk with my husband and I will do some lunges with a 40 pound toddler on my back because it helps me to feel more physically active. Reduce meetings by five minutes if you can. Use that time to stand up and walk around between one meeting after another. If you can, try to take the stairs. Even if it's just one flight of stairs, try to take the stairs wherever you go instead of the elevator. Sure, you're gonna be out of breath when you get to the top, but that's okay. Wash your car yourself instead of taking it to the car wash. And maybe try parking further away at the store. You know, I tend to try to park further away just so I can walk a bit closer when I'm going to the grocery store, I'm going to Target. Yes, it takes a bit more time, but it's not that much. And it helps add to my physical activity throughout the day. Some practical ways to incorporate change, you can get an activity tracker. We all have smartwatches these days, whether it be an Apple Watch or a Garmin or even a Fitbit. You know, with the activity trackers, you can compete with yourself, your friends or your spouse. My husband is constantly walking around throughout the day. So I try to keep up with him. I always fail, but that's okay. I still try every day. You can log your exercises. This is gonna keep your sense of motivation, your sense of accomplishment very high. If you see, you know, congratulations, you worked out three days this week and the next week it's four days, the next week it's five days. I find that personally very motivating. You can get a workout partner to hold each other accountable. So you can work out with a friend or a, a family member 
you know, even if you can't work out with them, you both can sign up for any of these streaming on demand workout services, Beachbody, you know, there's a ton, less meals on demand. There's a lot of on demand workout things that you can partner with someone to do. Schedule time throughout the day, set reminders on your calendar, your phone, a journal, anything that you look at regularly to kind of remind yourself to work out. I find it very helpful to do a workout calendar for accountability. So I create a schedule for the month and I hold myself accountable to it. Sure, there are some days when maybe I'm exhausted and don't feel like getting up. I just don't work out those days. That's okay. I had a plan. If I make it, great. If I don't, that's all right. You could get a pet, believe it or not. Owning a dog, dog parents are much more likely to reach their fitness goals. And dog owners are 30 for, 34% more likely to get their 150 minutes of walking a week versus non-dog owners. You have a very high energy dog. They're going to walk you tremendously. You can pick one of the American Heart Association's Fierce Five Movement Break videos or podcasts. Listen to that to get motivation and ideas. You can go to heart.org slash move more together to find videos, tips, resources. You can share this on social media with the hashtag move more if you're Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Even if you're not, share it with yourself. So general exercise tip, always start with a warm up to prepare your muscles, gradually increase your exercise to longer periods of time to build up stamina, increase activity at your own pace. Don't be afraid to get moderately out of breath, you know, four to five on a scale of one to 10. Improve your muscle strength by lifting weights and don't skip, don't forget to skip the cool down. Try to stretch for a few minutes post-workout to increase your flexibility because there's nothing worse as you get older than working out and getting some really tight hamstrings because that is the worst. So try to stretch. It's very tempting to lay on the floor instead. I'd say give yourself a few minutes to lay on the floor exhausted and then get up and stretch. It may work out better that way. Just a word real quick about exercising during COVID-19. As we've talked about children and adolescents and adults all need physical activity. You can engage, engage in family playtime, which is any game where everyone's moving. My kids love to play tag and hide and go seek. As much as I don't have the energy for that, I suck it up and do it to make my kids happy. You can catch up on household chores, whether that be cleaning out your closets, vacuuming, shampooing the rugs. I know that's not what you wanna hear, but that counts as physical activity. You can get outside, mow the lawn, go for a walk, ride a bike, go hiking in the park, get out, get some fresh air. You'll be safe from COVID. You can physically distance. And then you can stream workout programs on demand. You know, several of them, I mentioned Beachbody and Les Mills. I have no partnership with any of them. They're just ones I've happened to use in the past. They have a per year fee and you pay per year and it's much cheaper and easy to do in the safety of your home. So in summary, just a reminder, physical activity is very important. It has a lot of physical and psychological benefits. There are a lot of barriers in life these days to working out, but make a commitment to make a change to improve your health in a number of ways. So I'm Dr. King. It was very nice spending time with y'all. Have a wonderful day. I don't know about you, but for me, that was really an eye opening. Thank you, Dr. King, for spending some time with us today. Now, before we move on to our next presentation, how about we take another binge break? Wait, 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 put down your phone. This is just a little cool down stretch. Fine, you can use it like this. But before I go, I just wanted to say you're awesome. Believe it or not, you're about 90 seconds more active than you were before, and your heart totally noticed. Yeah, the workouts are done, but you don't have to be. Visit heart.org slash make moves to learn more about how you and your heart can keep moving. Okay, it's time to stand up again and move more with our next presenter. This workout is a little slower paced and is designed to show us how our physical and our mental health are connected to each other. It's a great stress reliever workout that is perfect at the end of a long workday. That's whether you're an executive working virtually from home or maybe you're an essential worker who needs to wind down after one of those long shifts of being on your feet. Let's welcome our next presenter, Carly Carpier integrative health and wellness consultant and executive director at Holistically Dope. Welcome.
Hey everybody, Carly Carpio here from Holistically Dope to bring you another mindful moment. So first we talked about why it's important to have a mindfulness practice in your life. Then we discuss a couple of ways that you can start to practice mindfulness in your life. And then today, I want to discuss how it's important for stress and anxiety in a way to help get you out of that stressful or anxious state by using your mindfulness practice. So if you have a really stressful job, if you are around a lot of people who are stressed out often, it can begin to weigh really, really heavy on your spirit, which keeps your body in a constant state of fight, flight, or freeze. Whenever your body is in this sympathetic nervous system, your body is ready to save yourself and run away from danger. Your body is not able to retain information very well. It's not able to learn new things. And you're not coming from a grounded place because your body is trying to survive. Mindfulness is a way to help de-escalate your body from the sympathetic nervous system to your parasympathetic nervous system, which allows your body to rest, restore, and heal. So think about it like this. If you're driving to your job, somebody slams on their brakes in front of you, your whole body tenses up and your body goes into fight, flight or freeze because it's trying to save you. Now think about that feeling that we carry around in our bodies every single day, whether it's that happening or getting anxious about a difficult conversation or maybe losing a job or dealing with someone in our family who's hurt or even everything that's going on in the world today and that has been going on in the world. It is super important to learn how to integrate mindfulness into your life in a way that you can scientifically de-escalate that stress in your body to a state where you can move from a grounded, centered position. So a couple ways we can do that. The first is to introduce movement into your body. So stress begins to manifest in our body. So think about any tension knots you might have in your shoulders, in your neck, in your spine, even in your hips. So stress manifests in our body in knots and getting tense, maybe even in soreness if you've ever woken up with like a sore neck or you couldn't turn it one way or the other. So that is how stress begins to manifest in our bodies. And it's important to move so we can move that energy around and also increase circulation. So that's the first step in de-escalating from this sympathetic nervous system is to take action and to move. So introducing movement into our bodies. The next step is to breathe. So taking a moment to center yourself, to ground yourself in where you are in this present moment, helping your body realize that although there may be very real tension around you, that you can still be in your parasympathetic nervous system, that you can de-escalate from fight, flight, or freeze into, yes, there is a lot of stress, there is a lot of tension, but it doesn't have to override your nervous system. And then the third part is grounding. It's important to make sure that we ground in this present moment that we realize where we are so that we can make informed decisions so we can take care of ourselves and improve our work our life our relationships our happiness and everything around us now i'm not saying that mindfulness will magically make your stress go away because it won't but what it will do is help your body in that moment when you begin to feel overly tense overly anxious overly stressed out to relax and to release and to be able to move from a grounded position so I invite you to join me today. So sit down in your nearest chair, your couch, your office chair, your car, as long as you're not driving, if you're parked somewhere safely, and sit up as tall as you can. We'll take three clearing breaths and then we'll get started. So big inhale through your nose, try to fill up your belly. Big exhale out of your mouth. Let's do two more big breaths like that. Big inhale through your nose. Really big exhale out of your mouth. Last big inhale, fill up that belly. Really big exhale out of your mouth. And then on your next inhale, bring those palms all the way up towards the sky. Grow as tall as you can. Reach up, reach up, reach up. Exhale, drop that right palm down your right side. You can hold onto your chair or your thigh. Reach up and over. Keep that left hip grounding down into that chair. Get that nice stretch. Inhale, reach those arms up towards the sky. And then exhale, come down the other side. Starting to open up these side bodies, warming up our spine introducing a little bit of movement into our bodies. Inhale, reach, and then exhale, lengthen. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, lengthen over. Good, let's do two more on each side. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, over. Inhale, grow as tall as you can. And then exhale, reach up and over. Last one on each side. Inhale, lengthen. 
Exhale, stretch. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, stretch. Last big inhale up. Grow as tall as you can. Exhale, flip those palms and slowly bring them back down by your sides intentionally, almost like you're going through water. On your next inhale, circle those shoulders towards the front of whatever room you're in and then exhale them down your back. Circle those shoulders forward. Exhale them down your back. Three more big breaths here. Inhale forward. Exhale down your back. Noticing how it feels. Inhale forward. Exhale down your back. Last two here. Inhale. Really big circles. Exhaling down your back. Inhaling forward. Exhaling back, last big breath going this way. Inhale forward, exhale down your back. And now we're reverse. So inhale, coming up your back and exhaling down the front. Inhale, exhale down the front. My shoulders are kind of crunchy. Inhale forward, exhale down. Inhale, bringing them up the back and then exhaling down. Last two here. Inhale, reach it up exhale bring it down you can start to shake it out for the next one i want you to make sure you're not going to hit anything next to you so i have a wall so i'm going to be careful on this side to the inhale bring those palms up in front of you your palms can touch or they can just float and big exhale here on your next inhale begin to open those arms wide lifting up through that chest exhale drawing those palms together Inhale, open through those palms, through your chest, wide. Exhale together. Three more big breaths here. Inhale, expand through your chest, spread those arms as wide as you can. Exhale together. Last two here, inhale, open. Exhale together. Inhale, open as long and wide as you can. Exhale together. Last one here, inhale, lift up through that chest. Open those arms as wide as you can. And then exhale, gently bring them back together. Flip your palms down and slowly, like you're moving through water, bring them down towards your lap. Taking a moment to sit with your body, noticing how it feels as you begin to introduce movement and intentional breathing into your body. So we introduce a little bit of movement, a little bit of mindful stretching. Now we're gonna do the breath work part. So I want you to flip your palms up. And as you inhale, I want you to expand through your fingertips as wide as you can. And on the exhale, gently curl those fingertips in towards your palms. Not clenching, not fists, not any more tension than we already have in our bodies, but inhale, expanding those fingertips as wide as you can. And then exhale, gently curling them in. And they can rest on your lap. I was just lifting them so you can see. So sitting up as tall as you can, lengthening the crown of your head up towards the sky, setting those palms right on top of your lap. Begin to inhale through your nose for one, two, three. Begin to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Begin to inhale for one, two, three, Begin to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Begin to inhale for one, two, three. Expanding through those fingertips. Begin to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Begin to inhale. You can close your eyes if you want to for one two, three, relaxing those shoulders away from your ears, beginning to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, begin to inhale for one, two, three, begin to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, inhaling, expanding through those fingertips for one, two, three, exhaling for six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Making this next breath your biggest breath all day. Begin to inhale for one, two, three. Exhaling, releasing all the tension out of your body for six, five, four, three, two, one. Keeping your eyes closed or your gaze soft. Allow your breath to return to normal. And just taking a moment to check in with how you feel. Allowing yourself this moment to be still to be completely present, not with your to-do list, not with what you have to do today or what you didn't get done yesterday, but what you have to do right after this, but just gently relaxing the tension out of your forehead, releasing your jaw and grounding into this present moment. Allowing yourself this space, allowing yourself this time Allowing yourself whatever it is that you need in this moment. Keeping your eyes closed or your gaze soft, gently allow your body to settle into this present moment. Relaxing your forehead, releasing your jaw, removing your tongue from the roof of your mouth if you happen to find it there and just allowing yourself this time and this space to check in with how you feel physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Not thinking about what it is you have to do right now, what you didn't get done yesterday, that email that you forgot to send, did you do this thing for the kids? Just allowing those thoughts to come you can't stop them from coming but choosing to not attach to them so allowing them to wash up on the shore like waves and then gently drift back to sea giving yourself this moment to be present to be tuned in with yourself to listen to see whatever it is that your heart needs what your body needs Relaxing any tension out of your forehead, out of your shoulders. Grounding down in this present moment. Knowing that wherever you are, however you are, you are enough. Exactly as you are in this moment, without condition, that you have everything that you need. And that it's okay to feel however you feel. It's okay to have thoughts. It's okay to have your mind racing. But allowing yourself some grace just to be present. Allowing yourself some space to feel whatever it is that you need to feel. And being gentle with yourself throughout this process. I want you to think of something that you are extremely grateful for. Allowing that gratitude to fill your belly, to fill your body, to fill your mind. If you're grateful for a person, a moment, an experience. Relaxing your face, releasing your jaw. And gently blink open your eyes. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join me, Carly Carpio, for another mindful moment with Holistically Dope and the American Heart Association. It is so important that you take time for yourself to tend to your mental, physical, emotional health. And thank you for sharing this time with us. Remember, any time that you start to feel really anxious or stressed out, you can introduce mindful movement, some breath work, and some grounding into your daily life, into your daily practice to help get you out of that fight, flight, or freeze and into your parasympathetic nervous system so you can make grounded decisions when your body's able to restore, relax, and heal. Again, my name is Carly Carpio. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you, Carly. That is a great way to get physical at home. 
Now, before we say goodbye, I want to let you know that the American Heart Association has tons of resources that are free to view and download on their website at heart.org. You can access all kinds of brief workout videos. There's also fact sheets about physical activity, and you can even learn more about heart health and stroke prevention in both English and Spanish. There are also healthy recipes, support networks, and so much more. Again, it is all free, and it is at their website, heart.org. And finally, we cannot close out this edition of the South Texas Vestido Rojo without thanking our sponsors. Huge, huge thank you to our presenting sponsor, Methodist Healthcare Ministries of South Texas. Our local sponsors, Christus Spawn Health System in Corpus Christi, and also Texas IPS in San Antonio. We have had a lot of fun this morning and I hope that you feel motivated to be even more active. Let's choose to make today the first day on a new path to a healthier, longer life. On behalf of everyone at the American Heart Association, thank you for joining us and we'll see you again on May 22nd. We'll leave you now with one last binge break from Vestido Rojo. I know you're saying, ugh, her again, but that's okay because your heart is saying yes. Ready? Lunge one, and two, and three, nice, four, and let's hold this one. Lunge, hold. Imagine doing this every day. You'd literally be lunging into a healthier you.